I call to order the workshop for Bullhead City Elementary School Board on Thursday, January 14th at 5.38 p.m. Uh, roll call. Corey Burgess here. Jeannie Borland here. Amanda Amen here. Brandy Dubois here. Charlene Diaz here. All present. Dr. Stewart. Uh, well, okay, so the first item you all wanted to talk about was the tax credit. Uh, we included in the agenda the uh, guidelines or the rules that we have to follow relative to tax credit, use of tax credit money. And then I put in front of you on your desk, I had Kim put in front of you on your desk, paper clip together, uh, documents that Lance prepared. Um, he keeps us on track with the paperwork and uh, advertising, you know, both on social media and all of the media. Uh, for uh, the tax credit stuff. So you see the new form that's up to date for 21. Uh, and then you see the uh, form that employees can use uh, for um, payroll deduction. Uh, you can see, oh, I'm trying to think what the third thing is since I didn't keep myself a copy. Oh, the, okay, these are the local tax preparers that um, uh, we take these forms, to, uh, ask them to encourage people to do tax credit donations. And then the last page is uh, the clubs and things that you have, uh, that you authorized earlier in the year uh, to be able to receive and use tax credit funds. So whatever you all wanna talk about. Uh, and there is a copy of the guidelines in front of you as well. This is a boat we're severely missing um, in our community. It is incredible what it, what it actually allows for things to happen. Um, a lot of people don't even, aren't even aware of it. And the great thing about it, we use it for my clubs. Um, we use it for the wrestling program at the high school heavily. Uh, because if you have a tax liability, you get to determine where that money goes. So basically, are you gonna give your money to Phoenix or are you gonna let it stay here? If you're paying taxes anyways, why are you letting it go to Phoenix? And the, the best part about this is you get to pick what program it goes to. So you can say, I want it going to Diamondback Music, or I want it going to Sunrise, whatever club they have uh, on it. You, you get to pick. And why every single person in our community is not doing this is beyond me. It is absolutely incredible. This is one of many tax credits our state allows. Mm -hmm. And uh, hopefully in 2022, they'll renew this. But it is absolutely phenomenal. We dang near fund our season in wrestling through tax credits uh, for all the stuff we wanna do, all of the things that are going on, new equipment we need, all the, it, it's incredible. So uh, I really wanted to put this on here as a shout out so we could get more people in the community involved. And it's, we do not collect nearly enough, not even close. Um, I, one of the things I will say to you is in most years, uh, Lance is out with this stuff anytime he's out representing both school districts and has the forms and has all the lists of activities and all of those things and heavily promotes it. Uh, as you know, this year, there haven't been many opportunities for him to do that. And um, uh, so it was a good idea. I didn't even know until today when he told me about the list of tax provider, or, you know, the tax preparers, that they had that. But he was also telling me, who is it, Lance, that um, gives you, gets the best results for the districts? Mr. President, members of the board, uh, my experience so far of all of the folks on this particular page right now, the tax preparer who has shown the most interest uh, and is in the best communication back and forth is Chuck Copeland, the CPA in Laughlin. <laughs> in Laughlin. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Chuck's been in town since the Ice Age. He's, he's a great guy, involved in a lot of stuff, mostly on that side of the river. Before Laughlin High was built, his kids went to Mojave when Mojave Union High School District was serving the kids in Laughlin. Um, I happen to sit on the Laughlin Chamber Board with Chuck. 
So we've got that relationship. But with a lot of the CPAs and the non-CPA tax services in town, sometimes it's a ho-hum response, sometimes it's no response whatsoever. Chuck's great. You know, Chuck's always asking for more forms. Um, so there is, you know, Mr. President, you're right, that opportunity is out there. One of the important things about this form, and you may recall um, from previous years, is that I email this out to members of both boards and ask, whoops, I'm sorry, ask for a review of, is there anybody that I'm missing? Is there anybody that you think should be added? Is there anybody who's dropped dead and their tax service is no longer in business anymore? Because this includes both CPAs and non-CPAs. And uh, so I'll save you the time of not emailing it this year, but if you happen to see any corrections or any additions, please go ahead and either let me know or let Dr. Stewart know, and we'll get it updated. Some of them I send electronically, some I hand deliver. Um, we did learn something today uh, in review process. There is another district in Mojave County that has, that is now taking these forms to local banks and uh, that, I think, is something that we can start doing as well. We've got a pretty good relationship with most of the, the banks up and down the river, and uh, at least with the, um, you know, their, their uh, GMs or their branch managers. So that's going to be another outreach opportunity as well. As Dr. Stewart mentioned, one of the big, big things that has hurt this year was just the lack of physical outreach opportunity. There still have been social media posts, there still have been news releases, there will still be the, the um, end of the tax filing period push. You know, we had some posts and had some stuff go out at the end of the calendar year, but quite frankly, a lot of people now wait until April, now that it's been extended. Uh, and we've got the opportunity as, um, is listed on the back of the tax credit form for the next two years to include playground equipment and shade structures. That's never been allowed before. That's an opportunity for the elementary district. So um, I think there's some, some opportunities, but we've, we've got to get, in addition to just getting the word out to the general public, we've got to get buy-in from the tax preparation services. And that's something that's really tough for me to do by myself. That's something I think where we all need to lend a hand. Um, you know, whether we use a tax preparation service or know somebody who works for a tax preparation service or a CPA, and um, you know, it, it's going to be a team effort to to get things back up and running again, pandemic or no pandemic. Thank you. Answer, yes, ma'am. Um, when's the last time we sent anything out on social media regarding the tax credit? And do we have something scheduled coming up shortly about the tax credit? Um, it'll be very easy to get something up shortly. Um, there have been a couple posts since, since the pandemic. Uh, there is an event that is scheduled in about six weeks, six or eight weeks, that would be our first opportunity other than the fire safety fair, which was in October, um, there'll be a, a hands-on opportunity uh, to share the information. Um, lots going to depend on the safety protocols in place, whether it's going to be appropriate to participate or not. But w I can get more stuff up on social media at any well, I mean, time. maybe even if we did January, April, September, sure. and every couple months. Because I, I mean, I, we've all got you know people we know that. Oh yeah, I saw that. That I forgot. I forgot, and they right. forget. I mean, they just truly out of sight, out of mind. So maybe the more frequently that we have it right. there. I mean, if, especially. I mean, we've been in the COVID pandemic for ten months. Years. Ten months. We're getting on that year. So <laughs> yeah, we got to hit them again because I'm with you know Mr. Burgess that there are so many opportunities that are missed with this. I mean, we see it all the time up in uh, at the high school and things, and it. We definitely could use 
could use more push on it because it is a huge opportunity mm -hmm. that is missed. Right. Well, if I could interject, they still can yes. uh, make a donation before April 15th. Yes, ma'am. So, you know, that's something we really want to push too. Yes. And while they're, while they're thinking of it, we can say, Ex check exactly. <laughs> so we could say, okay, write a check for last year, and while you're writing checks, write a check for this year. Then you don't. Ha then you can forget about it for the rest of the year. Yeah. What a <laughs> and and the truth is that list of tax preparers. I didn't know that until today when Lance was sharing it with me. The people who actually hire tax preparers are the people who might have some expendable cash to write those checks, as opposed to lots of other people. So. Um, that's why it's a little disappointing that they're not being, you know, that they're not pushing it for not just our district, but for whatever district that, you know, the, the people want to be sharing with. So uh, we'll, we'll be pushing that a little harder. And, and maybe we even want to get back with our staff and let them know for their programs. I know when I was at the junior high, we, ooh, we pushed hard. I mean, we raised close to $15,000 in tax credits one year. And the great thing about it when you do it with your program and you put your list together once people start doing it, they will continue to do it. So once they've given that tax credit and they get that $400 or 200, it's $200 for an individual, $400 for a couple, uh, filing jointly maximum contribution. But once they give it, I get the same people giving to us every exactly. single year because they, they just cycle it. And a lot of them, once they get that $400 refund, <coughs> they're just writing that check right out to the school again and giving it to me again, and it's a wonderful program. There's another reason for us to push this right now. On that list that you have of our programs that you've approved, many of those right now are part of 21st century. So they won't qualify for tax credit right now. You can't double dip, okay? But at some point, 21st century may end. And if we get people in the habit of sending those dollars um, you know, even if they designate them for something that does qualify for right now, but if we get them in the habit of doing that each year, if and when 21st century goes away from the three sites that have it. Now, we have two sites that don't have it, so the tax credit money can go to those clubs. At the sites that have 21st century, we've got to be careful about how we use those funds, but get them in the habit, and then if and when 21st century goes away, we will have a, a, an income stream for them. Um, I also think that this is a good opportunity for us in these two years to hit up some folks for some funds for, we need a big shade structure at Fox Creek in the center of the campus. Um, you know, that's gonna be $35,000, $40,000. Five $5,000 raised this way would be really helpful in terms of figuring out how to come up with those dollars. Um, we probably need some playground equipment next door since the grade levels have changed. We probably have some equipment at the elementaries that need to be replaced, and we don't have the funds for those. So lots of things that, especially in this two-year period, that we could use the funds for that we've not been able to in the past. So it's a good, it's a good, good plan. Well, and I'll say it's important. He did mention it, uh, Mr. Ross did, but, you know, we, we're talking about the CPAs, but they can go pay directly to the school for tax credits and they can do it on their H&R Block, their TurboTax, their yes. all those different yes. self-prepared ones as well. So that's very important that we make sure we say that as well. Right. Yes, sir. Mr. President, members of the board, I, I think uh, we've got a two-prong approach. One is internal messaging and the other is external messaging. Right now, this is what we've got for our internal, you know, trying to convince our employees to get back into payroll deduction. You do, uh, right now we've, we've had, what, one pay period so far this school year? That still leaves 25 pay periods. You take 200 bucks, divide it by the remaining 25. Or it's $8.59. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so there's that. But we also... Um, there's an, also an opportunity to have payroll deduction in the private sector. Mojave Electric is set up for payroll deduction. Um, I know of one person there who does payroll deduction. I'm not sure which district it goes to, but that particular individual has payroll deduction for the schools. Um, 
there's no reason why a lot of the other businesses can't set up payroll deduction as well. We were starting to make inroads with the properties across the river and then one by one by one they went through ownership changes and management changes and trying to explain to their corporate folks in Vegas what an Arizona extracurricular tax credit was, let alone payroll deduction for it, um, had a, a really tough time, um, not only with their corporate folks, but also the, you know, the, the turnover of GMs that they had. So um, if you've got contacts with any of the businesses in town with, and it doesn't even have to be a large business, you know, it, it can be one with a f you know, few employees, if they're willing to go ahead and get this set up, I can create the form for them. We work with Sonny uh, and uh, Darlene uh, on the, in the business office and get that taken care of. They've got all the procedures set up for it, and it's a piece of cake. Um, I'm sure both of you have got the same thing set up through Crushed. You've got your payroll deduction set up through that. It's the same form, exact same form. All I do is change the district on it and a little bit of contact information. So the more we can convince our own employees of the merits of payroll deduction. Um, one of the workshops that I was at through one of my professional associations, through the School PR Association, when we were talking about tax credits, if you can get 50% of your school staff, faculty, administrators, um, administrative staff, to sign up for tax credits, it makes it a whole lot easier to get community buy-in. Because one of the questions that you're asked at events is, that I'm asked at events, is well, how many of your employees do it? So the better the case that we can all make as a team for it and the importance of it, um, I think the better the success is going to be. Thanks, I Lance. Think that's just my my humble opinion. Thanks. Thank you. Any other comments? I have a, a I don't know what it is. Um, <laughs> I know in the past that if you did a donation to the elementary, it would alleviate your sports fees at the high school. I don't know if they still are doing that. We probably have to double check with our current administration. That was um, a few years ago we did do that. I know that we had honored it. I believe we still honored it. I know it, it was year. honored last year because yeah. I did Fox Creek and it covered baseball teams for us. So I didn't know if it would. Hey, hey. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> Wrestling. <laughs> I think that's the kind of thing that we can just administratively decide yep. whether we're going to do it or not. Well, I know even though I made the donation last year, we did to the to the drama club at the high school. It still covered our baseball fees yeah. at the high school. Yeah, the high school set it up to cover any sports or extracurricular fees through your tax credit. Um, when the high school did it, they just wanted the money to stay in the community. Yeah. To, 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 to go ahead and donate to your child's school, but we just want the money to stay in the community. Yeah, I always tell people that this is the one opportunity I have to decide where my tax dollars go. That's the best <laughs> you know, uh, that that I get to I get to pick, yeah. and I like that. So yeah, you're paying it anyways. So paying it anyway, I might as well keep it here. Yep. Anything else? All right. Sure. Okay. Uh, well, you guys wanted to talk about staff appreciation. Okay, I, we, I'd asked about this. Um, we've done this in the past. I'd like to see it go again. Um, uh, this is really, I believe, is gonna be our responsibility as a board to head this up. Um, and I'd like to, to get some ideas, maybe, of directions we can go. Um, it, it is very well appreciated when the staff knows that we as a board appreciate our staff. I know we say it a lot, um, because we do. We absolutely appreciate our staff. We got an amazing staff, um, but, that's, that's one of those pieces that we're missing now that, that we really need to focus on bringing back. Um, so I, I would like to, for us as a board, to, to take this challenge on and, and put something together. And I'm willing to fit into that piece anywhere um, and, and get this going. So I'd like to see what you guys think and, and how, and any ideas on direction, things you may wanna see, how we wanna do it, um, it doesn't have to be this all grandiose thing, that, but, but 
we got to, I feel we got to do something. We got to get something together and, and, and put that for our staff. Um, it's a great way at the end of the year to have that pizzazz going out and the awards and the presents given and they love it. They love it. So. Is it something we can discuss in an executive session so it's not public? I don't know. Can we? I don't know. Don't think it falls under those little lists. Uh, Amanda has her little book there with the, with the list but of things that can be done in executive we session. It as a non-broadcasted workshop. Okay, um, and, and I'm not looking for commitments. Believe me, I'm not, I'm not, I'm really thought, but I just want to make sure we're all okay with moving forward in this. Um, so I'm not saying, okay, yeah. I want you to commit to this. I'm not, please believe right. me, I'm not, I'm not putting you, your, your feet to the fire right now. Because I understand uh, that My that thought is, be. is that it'd be nice to be able to brainstorm as a group with Exactly. Mm -hmm. And I think you could, I think you could schedule just a workshop session, a, a, board, a, 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 workshop. a board workshop. And, and you still would have to post it and people could right. come in if they wanted, but you could just have a round table. You could sit in the other in room the other and, room. Yeah. and do a, you know, do a planning session. There's nothing, nothing wrong with that as long as it's, you know, that it's out in the public that you're doing it and that right. that's what it's about, that it's just mm -hmm. a work session. A workshop All right, so sooner the better. Well, yeah, because you know we're in the middle of January already, and I don't know where this. I don't know where January's gone, and it's and it's almost half done. Almost <laughs> you know, done, yeah. so uh, let Kim know how you want to set that up, and she'll help you set it up. All right. So, uh, do you guys mind if I just get with Kim and and kind of do maybe some of my thoughts, have her put it to to paper, send it out, do like a, a living document. Now we can't share it amongst ourselves, but we can send it through administration. So we can send this stuff in and she can kind of put something together, getting collecting those thoughts. And if you have some, please email them in of, okay. of ways you want to go. That way we're prepared when we come to the workshop and we don't spend a lot of time getting the, getting the ball rolling. We already have a direction we're heading. That sounds great. All right. Excellent. I like it. Okay. And I appreciate the fact that you all are taking it on. That, you know, that it's not, not that the people who've done it from the district before minded doing it. It's just that it will mean more that it's actually coming from the board. And, and you and I know, all of us know that staff will appreciate that. Okay. Uh, you have some p policies to review. It's six o'clock. And it is six o'clock. Uh, we're, actually, <laughs> we're actually out of time and that's mostly my fault. Um, <laughs> Do you wanna roll those so over roll to those next time? So roll those over to next time and, and hit those next workshop? Is everyone okay with that? I'm fine with All right, that. yeah, so let's do that. And I may have a couple of a couple more for you to, to discuss next time, partly because uh, one of the things ASBA does is it puts out a calendar each year that says, here are some policies that you probably, here are some you probably need to look at in January, here's some for February and whatever. Um, and a couple of them we've already got on this list, but there may be a couple of extras for next time. No problem. All right, so with that, uh, I'll, we need a motion to adjourn workshop. I move we adjourn the workshop. We have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Corey Burgess. Aye. Jeannie Borland. Aye. Amanda Amen. Aye. Brandy Dubois. Aye. Charlene Diaz. Okay. Workshop adjourned. So at this time, I'd like to call to order our regular meeting scheduled for Thursday, January 14th, 2021 at 6 p.m. Uh, roll call. Corey Burgess here. Jeannie Borland here. Amanda Amen here. Brandy Dubois here. Charlene Diaz here. All present. Uh, citizens present, if you please sign in the back, we'd appreciate it. And if you join me for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Item 2.5, election of board members. <laughs> At this time, for the election of board members, we have to have nominations for board president and board clerk. Clerk, uh, do we have any nominations? I'd like to nominate Corey Burgess. He's been doing a great job. I second. I don't know if seconding, but second. <laughs> do we have other nominations? <laughs> All right. So. Uh, all in favor of Corey Burgess being the board president? Aye, Corey Burgess. Aye, Jeannie Borland. Aye, Amanda Amen. Aye, Brandy Dubois. Aye, Charlene Diaz. Okay, now we need a nomination for a board clerk. 
I'd like to nominate Jeannie Borland. I'd like to decline it. <laughs> I'd like to nominate Brandy Dubois. I'll second that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Any other nominations? Okay. All in favor? Aye, Corey Burgess. Aye, Jeannie Borland. Aye, Amanda Amon. Aye, Brandy Dubois. Aye, Charlene Diaz. So Mr. Moved. President, could I insert a footnote? One of the things you're going to see in the policies that you're reviewing is a policy for board clerk. For whatever reason, this district did not have, had not approved the policy for board clerk, and, uh, and yet it's a required position. So uh, it will be in that list that you're looking at. Great. Right. Right. Item 2.6, uh, days and times of monthly meetings. Uh, in the past, we've always <coughs> held the second uh, Thursday of the month. Third. third okay. Sorry, third Thursday of the month. Um, at 5.30 for workshops and 6 o'clock for meetings. Thank you. Is that still acceptable for all board members? Can we work that in our schedules? I think, I, I feel like it's acceptable to my schedule. However, I feel like we miss a lot of deadlines, so maybe we should move it to the second Thursday of every month. I'm okay yeah, with that. That's okay. Is everybody else good with that? that? Makes sense, yeah. And the high school still holds theirs on Tuesday, correct? Mondays. 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 Shows how much I know on Mondays. Um, and I would appreciate that because there are a lot of deadlines that fall on the 15th yeah. of the month. And, uh, and so it makes it, so we end up having lots of special meetings. Absolutely every meeting in uh, 2021 will fall before the 15th of the month. Okay. All right, um, and so no other problems, then I will move that we now move our board, regular scheduled board meeting workshops tentatively scheduled for the 5.30 with a six o'clock board meeting. Uh, can we get a second? I second that. All in, all in favor, aye, Corey Burgess. Aye, Jeannie Borland. Aye, Amanda Amon. Aye, Brandy Dubois. Aye, Charlene Diaz. So moved. Uh, I apologize, I did skip one part um, of our meeting. My mistake, uh, we'll call to the public. No, you didn't. No, right you didn't. It's oh. next. It's, right it's next. Right. I, I panicked. I did look. I was All coming right. up. Because <laughs> of elections. Uh, 2.7, uh, call to the public. This is the time the public may speak to the governing board regarding issues within the jurisdiction of the governing board, subject to reasonable time, space, and manner restrictions as the governing board may establish. Comments will be limited to three minutes per individual unless specifically waived by the governing board. At the conclusion of the call to the public, the individual members of the governing board may respond to criticism made by those who have addressed the board, may ask staff to review a matter, or may ask the matter be placed on future agenda. However, the governing board cannot take action on matters that have not been noticed as an, in advance as part of the agenda. And we do have a call to the public. Uh, Scotty McClure. Hmm. Yeah, I'm not sure. Can I do this? Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, this old business, I guess, is this thing, this gender thing, and sex is now gender. I've seen this before in California when I served with, on a board that Jerry Brown required us to, he wanted us to get rid of male and female bathrooms and gyms. And we voted no, but this is what I'm seeing here. I don't know who put this on the agenda or who's up to what here, but this is the way they are you can't say amen anymore in Congress, Washington, D.C., according to Nancy Pelosi and stuff. You can't say mother-in-law. You can't say father-in-law in the Capitol anymore. Of course, there's a few people that are going to go ahead and say amen. But anytime you start changing San Francisco's rights, um, you're asking for it. I am so glad I do not have a teenage daughter going to high school because the locker rooms will not be male and female. They're going to be gender rooms. That's coming. If you've got a 10-year-old daughter and you're a man, a father, let's say, you're not going to be real happy. I see this changing since I worked down in Tucson. In 1979, and this state has gone to 
hell. That is our only call to the public at this time. <clears throat> Item 2.8, adoption of the agenda. We get a motion to adopt the agenda. Make a motion we adopt the agenda. I second the motion. Charlene Diaz. All in favor? Aye. Corey Burgess? Aye. Janie Borland? Aye. Amanda Amen? Aye. Brandy Dubois? Aye. Charlene Diaz. So moved. Item 2.9, superintendent reports. Dr. Stewart. Um, you see our enrollment reports and uh, the building reports uh, and a financial report that looks very different from what you've seen in the past. Uh, but I felt like it was important for you to uh, know that we have more than two budgets, more than the M&O budget and the capital budget. We actually uh, have at this point 41 active budgets. And uh, so I figured that you needed to kind of know how money comes and goes out of those accounts. So if you ever have questions, let me know before board meetings or whenever you have questions and we'll go over them. Uh, only this first time will I put all the notes on all the pages um, for those, um, uh, unless there's some significant change that you need to know when I submit the next month. The I forgot to stop it, I'm sorry. You're done. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I'm done. Um, the one other thing that I will report as an update, um, uh, after the board meeting last month where I asked you for some direction relative to sports at Fox Creek, um, the committee met on the first day back from break and came up with a plan um, that was actually a pretty good plan. Um, they had some questions then about some legalities relative to our distance learning students and a couple of other things. And so I ran those by the attorney on the next day. Uh, Mr. Eastman was chairing that committee. He's acting as athletic director for Fox Creek this year. And uh, so he met with the committee again to uh, share with them those legal pieces of information. And the plan that they came up with was very much not to do interscholastic this year, but to use the 21st century program uh, and to expand all of their intramurals and even consider some different sports. Um, I suggested maybe they think about wrestling. Oh, that's a footnote, sorry. <laughs> um, <coughs> because we know that's, that's a growing sport for both uh, boys and girls uh, around the country. So they're, uh, they're recommending that they do intramurals. That way they can have as many kids as want to participate as possible and uh, teach them skills. They will put them in smaller groups so they keep some cohorts. Uh, and prevent, you know, the big widespread kind of contact thing, but uh, get lots of kids ready to perhaps pay, play sports in high school. And they're asking only, for, they're suggesting that only for this semester and re review the whole process for next year. So that concludes my report for tonight. Okay. So Dr. Stewart, I have a question for you. Um, regarding the sports, so did they make a decision regarding students that are not on campus versus students that are on campus? If, um, because the after school program is only for students who are on campus, then the ones who would participate in intramurals would be only the students on campus. So we're, okay, so we're restricting those that are not. Yes. Okay. Yeah. In, the, in this circumstance, we can do that because it's, par it's, a, it's part of 21st century and we have uh, some you know, rules and regulations attached to that. So um, that would not be the case if we did intramural sports. Uh, we would have kids who are never on campus who are coming only for practices and for, uh, for events. Is there a way to have an evening of 21st century where it would only be for those that are distant learning? So mm. that they have the opportunity to do so? We have in the past opened up uh, 21st century to community kids, homeschool kids, kids that weren't. Uh, right, because the, yeah, the, and that it, the virtual learning kids are in this situation kind of like homeschool kids. And, uh, and in the past when we've had intramurals, yes, those kids have been, uh, you know, have been part of the program. Um, uh, health concerns, I don't know, Jen helps those folks work on their 21st century program. We can take it back to them for some discussion. I was even thinking if it was just one hour a, for one of the four days, if it was just like, the, you know, 245 we can explore. to 45 block, or maybe 345 to 445 since they would have to come to the school most everybody would be cleared out by then, that would give them the opportunity to, you know, 
have a little bit of social, but keep them in a cohort, and that would still allow them to participate and have activity as well. Um, those students, like you mentioned, would be coming towards the high school next year. Absolutely. Training at Fox Creek, and hopefully would be involved next year. So that would maybe help not deter some of that lack of participation that they sure. received. receive. So this would also give them some social emotional with the ability to socialize a little bit with a cohort. We'll explore it, awesome. and I'll let you know. Thank you. Okay. Great. There's nothing in 21st century that says we can't do that. We'll just have to figure out how they've got their dollars set up and how they have their programs set up, and we can look at it. Yeah. It's a good idea. 21st century usually encourages community support, but I know in this type of setting we're, we're restricted a little, but maybe we could make a small little group for them. We'll look into it. Thank you. I have a question, Dr. Stewart. Do you know if other um, nearby school districts have also declined participating in sports activities with other districts? Some have and some haven't. And, and that was true. Um, uh, Mr. Eastman has met with the ADs from, you know, the surrounding districts where they ordinarily do the intramurals. And it's been a mixed bag of what they're doing and what they're not doing. So um, we're not the only ones who are saying no at this point. Um, but there are, you know, so it's all over the place. Any other questions? Right. Moving on. Item 2.1, donations. Uh, as always, our community does a fantastic job helping us out. Uh, we have a $95.68 multiple items for visual and hearing impaired students from people caring about children uh, to Coyote Canyon. Fox Creek Junior High at $2,123.29. Numerous learning aids to be used for special education in classroom from the Fiesta Bowl Charities and Desert Fa Financial Credit Union. $150 gift card for teachers from Universal Retirement uh, of, Dame, of James Beachoff. A $600 check to Adam Schulitz uh, for the Schulitz for the full size instruments from River Valley Artist Guild, and then Desert Valley received $145 for 397 three ply children masks from Mrs. Gates. Uh, thank you so much, community, for what you do for us. It really, really is appreciated. Um, item 2.11: uh, Board member updates. Do we have any board member updates at this time? Okay, moving on. Item 3.1, or item 3, consent agenda. Can we get a motion to adopt the consent agenda as submitted? I move that we accept the consent agenda as written. Do we have a second? I second, Amanda Amon. All in favor? Aye. Corey Burgess? Aye. Jeannie Borland? Aye. Amanda Amon? Aye. Brandy Dubois? Aye, Charlene Diaz. So moved. Item 4.1, a district policy A, district mission and belief statement. This is our second reading. Um, any changes that we wanted to see made to this policy uh, before we vote? <laughs> yes, Mr. President, there's a couple of spelling errors that we need to correct. All right. So. Brandy has presented those to Kim and she'll take care of that. Okay. Any other? All right, so I will move that we approve the district's mission statement and belief, mission and belief statement after corrections. Can we have a second? I second that. All in favor? Aye, Corey Burgess. Aye, Jeannie Borland. Aye, Amanda Amon. Aye, Brandy Dubois. Aye, Charlene Diaz. So moved. Item 4.2, policy AC, non-discrimination and equal opportunity. This also is a second reading uh, before our vote. Do we have any comments? Then I will move that we approve item 4.2. Policy AC, non-discrimination, equal opportunity. Do we have a second? I second that, Jeannie Borland. All in favor, aye, Corey Burgess. Aye, Jeannie Borland. Aye, Amanda Amon. Aye, Brandy Dubois. Aye, Charlene Diaz. So moved. <coughs> item 4.3. Uh, BCSD return to school plan, consideration of the continuation of phase two or possible changes. Dr. Stewart. Mr. President, board members, um, you can see my recommendation there. Um, we've had a leadership, we had a leadership team meeting last week, which is the principals and directors. Um, and, um, uh, and now we have our current data for uh, what's happening right now. Right now we have eight students out of school with COVID active COVID and 12 adults. Uh, we also have 11 adults on quarantine. Um, low numbers. Principals 
as much as they would like to have kids and uh, things back to normal, uh, really feel that we need a couple more weeks of really strict uh, management of this to keep these numbers down and keep them going down. I suspect that this item will be on our old business agenda probably the rest of this year um, so that we can keep considering whatever changes we need to make. As of, uh, as of today, uh, Bullhead City School District uh, is one of few school districts in Mojave County that has students, has had students in school consistently. Now it's, you know, 63 or 67% of our kids, depending on whether it was before break or now, but we have consistently had our kids in school. Um, and uh, other schools have been virtual for a couple of weeks, in and out, up and down, and that kind of thing. I think one of the reasons that we've been successful is the kids are in school, we have all the protocols in place, and with only eight kids right now after a two week break is pretty amazing. I think that was uh, a pretty big surprise to us that there would be so few kids, uh, but we'd like, to, we'd like to maintain that for another couple of weeks. So um, that's my recommendation, but we'll do whatever it is that you all would like us to do. Okay, what are the, uh, what are the feelings of the members of the board? <laughs> No. Uh, discussion first and then we'll, we'll make a motion on what we decide to do. I, I personally think that the teachers are a little bit stressed with the numbers and everything going on and to give them a little bit more of a reassurance, I'm fine with keeping things a little stricter, at least until our next meeting. I'm going to stay in the phase two for right now. And just go another couple weeks until, you know, everything's kind of level up. The number trend for the elementary district is really, really good. And that's nice to see. Um, I'm not opposed to sticking where we're at at this time and then really delving in and looking next month. Mm -hmm. So leave it on old business, something we continue to talk about. Yes. All right, so we will need a uh, motion. Um, who would like to entertain the motion? Go for it, Amanda. <laughs> okay, I'll do it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I will, I will move that we continue with the uh, phase two at this time and reconsider next month in old business. I'll second that motion. All in favor? Aye. Corey Burgess? Aye. Jeannie Borland? Aye. Amanda Amon? Aye. Brandy Dubois? Aye. Charlene Diaz? So moved. Item 5.1, Regulation GCCA-RA, Professional Support, Staff Paid Time Off. Dr. Stewart. Because I'm proposing to you uh, an extension of the federal program relative to the COVID Family Act, um, we already have GCCA-R, but I'm adding another regulation, and so that means only the name of this one has to change. So the only change to this regulation is adding an A, to the title, uh, and it is a regulation, so it can be approved in one reading. And this is the extension of? This is not, this is our current leave policy. This regulation is, and in fact, you approved those change, the other things that are on there a month or so ago or two months ago. Um, so it's only the change of adding an A because I'm going to propose to you a GCCA-RB. So I'll move at this time that we approve GCCA-RA professional support staff paid professional support staff paid time off. Second that, Jeannie Borland. All in favor? Aye. Corey Burgess. Aye. Jeannie Borland. Aye. Amanda Amon. Aye. Brandy Dubois. Aye. Charlene Diaz. So moved. Uh, item 5.2, regulation GCCA-RB <coughs> professional support staff paid time off. Thank you. Uh, the federal federal law that had to do with um, uh, paid time off for COVID-related absences expired on uh, December, tw uh, December 31st. This was the one that allowed us, for certain reasons that you can see here in this document down in the boxes, 
uh, that allowed us to continue to pay people uh, when they were on leave to the amounts that are listed up under uh, where those bullets are. As I said, this expired, but with the passage of the new, uh, I don't even know if it's called CARES Act or not, but the new COVID legislation at the federal level, this became an optional uh, thing for um, businesses and school districts and employers to do. Given the circumstances where nobody is choosing to have COVID, nobody's choosing to be quarantined because of somebody in their family having COVID or um, having to stay home to, for childcare, any of those circumstances, nobody's choosing to do that. So I'm uh, requesting that the board approve continuation of all the elements of this act as part of our leave program. So this regulation simply takes all of the same information from that federal program and just puts it with our heading at the top that it's a regulation. So I'm asking you to approve continuation of this way of dealing with folks who, uh, who are absent in some way, shape, or form related to COVID. Any questions? Okay, then I move that we approved GCCARB professional support staff paid time off. I second that motion, Amanda Amen. All in favor, aye, Corey Burgess. Aye, Jeannie Borland. Aye, Amanda Amen. Aye, Brandy Dubois. Aye, Charlene Diaz. So moved. Uh, exhibit GCCA-EA professional support staff paid time off. <coughs> As you know, exhibits uh, in the policy book are simply the documents or the forms that carry out the regulations and the policies. So this is simply our representation of uh, the corresponding form uh, that is used for the regulation that you just approved. It is exactly like the one we have been using since the first of the year. Any questions? Uh, then I move that we approve GCCA- EA professional support staff paid time off. I second that, Brandy Dubois. All in favor? Aye, Corey Burgess. Aye, Jeannie Borland. Aye, Amanda Amon. Aye, Brandy Dubois. Aye, Charlene Diaz. Item 5.4 BCSD classified placement schedule revision to reflect minimum wage for 2021. Mr. President, um, uh, this is the placement schedule for uh, when we hired classified personnel. It is not a salary schedule as we have for certified personnel. It is a placement schedule. Um, the minimum wage in Arizona changed to $12.15 on the 1st of January. And I'm not proposing any change, any other changes in this document at this time, uh, other than changing step one in lane one to the minimum wage. Uh, we only have probably, I think it was two employees that were making the minimum wage before. So obviously we're gonna move them up to $12.15. At this point, it doesn't affect anybody else in our employment. Any questions? Then I, I move, we approve the, is that an approve? Yes, yes, BCSD classified placement schedule. Second, Jeannie Borland. All in favor, aye, Corey Burgess. Aye, Jeannie Borland. Aye, Amanda Amon. Aye, Brandy Dubois. Aye, Charlene Diaz. So moved, thank you. Item 5.5, .5, calendar possible discussion uh, prior to staff input and collaboration with CRUHSD and other possible stakeholders. Dr. Stewart. Mr. President, board members. Um, I had this on the agenda before uh, I realized that the high school had their calendar on their agenda for their board on Monday. Uh, and so I just had attached to this a blank calendar so you would have something to look at and for you to give me just some general direction of uh, anything that you wanted to be sure we uh, included or anything you wanted to make sure was not included in our discussions with uh, staff and other stakeholders in building the calendar. In the meantime, of course, the high school has, adapted, uh, has adopted uh, a calendar with a couple of changes in it. And I think Kim has it so you can look at the high school one. You have a copy of that in front of you as well. And then you also have in front of you uh, a, a calendar that just moves all of those things a week later, just for you to give me some ideas of where, where you want us to go in uh, working with the high school or working on our own calendar. Dr. Stewart, 
I, yes, ma'am. I thought at the crushed board meeting on Monday they tabled the discussion pending discussion with the elementary. Yes, they did. So they didn't approve their calendar yet? They did not approve okay. it. It was on the agenda, but they did not approve okay. it. Um, and in fact, that's how I got a copy of this. So um, uh, you can see the one from that Crush is proposing. The one cha uh, the two changes that were proposed uh, in that discussion were uh, for September, where September 3rd, which is the first Friday, and uh, traditionally in our district, the first Friday is, uh, since we went to a four-day calendar, the first Friday is a PD Friday. Uh, the board suggested that they move that one uh, since it precedes a three-day weekend to move that professional development to the 10th and make the third a flex Friday. The corresponding change is the Friday, uh, Friday March 4th, which just precedes spring break to make that a flex Friday and move the PD to the 25th. Those were the only changes that their board uh, suggested at that meeting before tabling it and uh, sending it for some discussion with uh, the three elementary districts that feed into the high school district. Mr. Flora sent an email uh, the next morning with this calendar attached to each of the three superintendents for the, other th for the three elementary districts. Mr. Warren responded from Topak uh, that they do a five-day week and uh, they pretty much schedule it sort of around this, but it's a five-day week. Mr. Young, uh, the new superintendent from Mojave Valley Elementary School District, has been meeting with teams of people already. They're trying to tighten up their, uh, their calendar. In the past, you know, they've had two weeks of fall break, two weeks of winter break, two weeks of spring break. It used to be three, but it's been two. And they're trying to tighten that up and bring it down to one week of fall break, one week of spring break. So um, their calendar actually starts, uh, the one they're pr probably proposing actually starts on the 2nd of August. So it's a little bit different than the one the high school is proposing. Um, so, but essentially both of those districts have kind of gone on their own and then kind of fit it in. So um, that's one of the reasons that I want some idea from you all of what kinds of things. Do you want us to work strictly with this? Do you want us to make some suggestions? Are there things you don't like about it? Are there things you want changed? Give me some direction, please. I like the idea of moving those professional development days and, and required days like the high school suggested. Um, I would like to see us to align our calendar if possible with uh, the high school because this, we do have a lot of families that have kids in both districts. So that does relieve a lot of that pressure. Um, that's my, my opinion. Well, I'd like both calendars to look at at, you know trying to make their flex Fridays uh, more even um, the concern I have is when I look at March and we take off spring break and then we have a full week and then a, a red Friday and then we have another week and a PD Friday another week PD Friday another week red Friday and another week and then a flex so we our kids are essentially going five six weeks if you include spring break without the flex Friday mm -hmm. so to me, I, 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 I don't know if we can, if we can look, if we can break up some of that a little bit, slip a flex Friday in there, move a red Friday. We have two PDs back to back in there, and I know that they're utilized. I just would like to see if there is a way to maybe spread them out. So, um, Ms. Amon, are you perhaps switch the 25th with the 18th? That would give us... That would give a... Although that makes it just a week after the break, but... Um. And then, I mean, I'm, I don't know how the calendars work. I'm just ideas and thoughts. But even with that Flex Friday on the 4th or the Flex Friday, are you able to move? Like, I noticed that we have seven Flex Fridays and seven Red Fridays in the fall, and we have six Flex and six Red in the spring. Are you able to kind of move them around, or do, is it just broken up so they're semi-equal? Originally, when, when Flex Fridays were set up, Originally, in this district at least, there were two Flex Fridays each month. Um, but, that ha but then that c changed because of funding issues. Those were funded with some grant funds that no longer exist. So um, uh, that's part of the reason it's this way. I don't know that it's any particular number in either semester necessarily. Uh, I'm a little surprised by um, 
Kim, will you, will you uh, scroll, uh, scroll a little bit so we can see May? Um, I'm a little surprised that the Crushed Calendar has a Flex Friday in May. We usually don't have a Flex Friday in May at all. And we utilize it. <laughs> sure, I'm sure you it do. Is, it is. Yeah, I'm sure you do. It's pretty packed. Credit well, recovery, though. Kids want to make sure they're getting their grades up. Yeah, and getting it's different right. from the high school. The semester, right. Yeah, I, mean, I think, I, I don't, I mean, I, like the September 3rd to have a Flex Friday before the three-day weekend, I think it kind of defeats getting the kids there. I mean, I'd rather see that one on the 17th, but. The, the September and the March ones were the ones the high school was recommending changing anyways, weren't they? Well, the, it is shown, it, the change is shown on this, ma on, this, on this version. So the Flex Friday is on the 3rd. That used to be, or that was oh, a PD. Okay. Um, historically, the PDs have been on the first Friday of each month. It makes it very easy for people to remember. And... Um, so, you know, I, I understand the argument about not having a PD Friday on uh, uh, the before a three day weekend. On the other hand, as Jeannie says, if you have a flex Friday, the chances of getting kids there are slim. Yeah. So can we it, put it on the 17th? Put the flex Friday on the 17th and make yeah. the third a red Friday? Yeah. I mean, I think that makes more sense. If we're not going to do a PD day, why would you do a flux? And that would be the same thing. You yeah. could do the exact same thing in March, flip the 18th to flip the 4th. Yeah, I agree. Because if teachers want that uh, day off, then I'm sure your families do too. <laughs> like to travel or whatever. Yeah, that makes more sense. I like that. That breaks up my six weeks of no flex Friday. Either it gives it a little bit, it means two weeks. Okay, so in September, September 3rd would be a red Friday and September, 7, uh, September 17th uh, would be a flex Friday, right? Yes. yes. Okay, and then in March, March 4th would be a red Friday, and March 18th would be a flex Friday. Is that what you're recommending? I like yes. that. Any other changes you guys want to see in there? Mm. None? I mean, yeah, there are. I was just looking at the November one, the Friday before Thanksgiving break. You'll probably have low numbers, but the 12th, the 11th is Veterans Day, I'm guessing. So the 12th, people are going to want that long weekend too, so it don't really matter. Yeah, you're back to back. Um, conferences in February, I like them when they're on different days from the high school. There are a lot of people happy about that, so I don't know if we can... And I would recommend that we do that. Actually, February, that one makes, that's a little tough to change for us. Uh, I would recommend to you that for our October uh, parent conferences for Bullhead School District, that we move those from the 13th, 14th for us they already are to the 20 to 21st. They are. Now, for us to move them to the 20, 21st. They're already there. On our calendar. They're already on our calendar moved. You know, this is my this is my possible one oh, that okay. I gave right. to you. That's a different thing, totally. Right. This is starting a week later, so. Okay. Um, yeah. So let's oh, stay with the, the crushed one. one. All right. Yeah. I was stay with the crushed one, please. Yeah. Uh, but we would what move ours. Happen? Yeah, because everybody did like having <laughs> that a week later, um, and we would do that on our calendar with your approval, as we would have ours a week later. The problem with the February one is that if we move those a week later. We only really have one day of school that week. Well, we have two. We have Tuesday and Wednesday. Uh, and that, that might present some problems if we move that to the 23rd, 24th. Um, or the 9th, 10th. Now, one of the things we could do is move in February. Uh, for our district, we could move it to the 24th, 25th. And... Um, and move that flex Friday for us because it, that really does not affect the high school or whatever when we have, does it? Flex Fridays, no. It doesn't. Yeah. Flex Fridays doesn't really affect. So we could move flex Friday from the 25th to the, uh, to the 18th and have our conferences on Thursday, Friday because our, our folks prefer to do a full day of school with kids evening conferences and then only morning conferences on the second day no kids only morning conferences and they're gone at noon yeah i like that and there were a lot of people who did appreciate 
not coinciding. Are you okay with that? Everybody okay with that? Yeah. Okay. Any other changes? No, I have a question though, um, Dr. Stewart. So you're proposing that we start on the same day as the high school this year? Well, that's, uh, that's what you all are wanting to do. I, I wanted to give you an option um, of, uh, of starting a week later um, at, and for you at least to think about starting a week later. It's essentially the same calendar, just move it a week later. For, uh, and that maybe I could share that with the high school and say, okay, can we talk about this? Um, and the reason, uh, several reasons for that. One is, if you notice on this calendar, we have summer school in July. We have three weeks of summer school in July. That worked this year. This was the first time we ever did that. And it was really, uh, really good. And everybody liked it. We had kinder camp. Uh, when we have kinder camp in June, kids are there for a couple of weeks or three weeks, and then they're gone for five weeks and they've forgotten anything they've done. Um, but uh, everybody, the kids liked it, teachers liked it, everybody liked it. And starting school on the schedule that the high school has, we can't get that, we can't get the 12 days in. It's a funded program from Title I, and we have to have 12 days of that. So uh, that, was an, that was one reason for considering moving a week later. A second reason is fewer hot days in school uh, if we start a week later. But my other reason was the farther we can get down the road from COVID, the more likely we can have normal school. Uh, so for me, those were, the, those were the three things. And I at least wanted to give you options. You know, I wanted to not just, I mean, it, it's fine whatever we do, but to give you some options to consider. I do too. I think the only issue was the whole payday thing last year. Is that going to still be an issue? Will they miss a payday? I don't. I don't think so because there are three paydays. There, are, I mean, there are there are five Fridays in in uh, July, and at some point we're going to have to do it anyway right. because if we keep moving earlier and earlier and earlier, at some point we're going to have to drop back a week. Um, and I think if if we were to decide this now, people have lots of time to plan for that payday, you know, yeah. hold, hold, save some of my, as a, you know, as an employee, save some of my, uh, my prop money, you know, put it aside to help me get over that week. Um, the people who would be teaching summer school would have a little bit of income during that time. Uh, but with the three, the five Fridays, there would be three paydays that month. So I think we, I mean, I think it's doable, especially if it's decided early that would take us off the calendar with the high school because of graduation and everything they've got. So they, that's going to be very difficult for them to move a week later. Well, unless, unless we negotiate with them and say, hey, how about moving a week later? You know, Mojave Valley's starting a week later. They would be starting actually only two days before this. They're planning on starting on the second. Um, I don't, John didn't, John Warren didn't give a specific calendar or dates that he was looking at. He tends to match his to Mojave Valley, partly because his seventh and eighth graders go to Mojave Valley Junior High. So, uh, you know, so they coordinate a little closer than with us because of that. I think the key is that the holidays, the, the times the kids are off, are the same for the most part. Except for that week later starting this. So the summer. Me, why, why are we starting on a Wednesday? We're We've been starting on a Wednesday for a number of years. It gives us a couple of days to get kids in place and, and uh, you know, get routines set up. You set up all your routines during those days, and then you hit, hit the academics starting on Monday. Um, and, and it gives us those days that we, uh, that we want for teacher in service beforehand and, and those kinds of things. And it's worked very well for a number of years to start on Wednesday. I, I spoke to um, Superintendent Floor about the start date last year, and he said that they have to start earlier because to get all of their semester days in for first semester. And so I don't think that they would be changing it to, ma to match us if we started later. The thing with uh, the thing with the high school, Brandy, is that um, uh, high school credits are not determined by number of days. They're determined by credits. Um, yes, this does unbalance the number of days. It makes 72 in the first semester 
and 78 in the second semester. Um, uh, but there, it's it's not days. The high school doesn't govern, uh, doesn't determine anything based on days. It's based on credit hours, and uh, and it might affect that. So you know, it might be the kind of thing. And in fact, he mentioned that when I suggested the idea of considering a week later. Um, his other uh, his other concern was the dual enrollment classes with the college, and when the college has graduation and those things. Uh, I think that's kind of a spurious argument. Uh, the dual enrollment classes have been around for at least 15 years. My daughter participated in them. It's just they that that class, that it's just, later and end earlier, exactly. It, really doesn't it doesn't really affect anything. So I, that to me was not a good argument for this, uh, or you know, for the earlier thing. Uh, but he did talk about the the, number, the credit hours, and he did talk about the salary thing. So it's not that those are not concerns. We need to we need to consider consider them, and we need to talk. You know, whatever it is, we're going to arrange and, and coordinate with them. I, the biggest thing I see with it is that week that we would be, if they didn't, we'd be a week of our kids at home, and the high school kids at school, if they didn't push back a week with us. But they're going to have the same issue in the valley if they're starting earlier. Yeah, we got a lot bigger River population. Valley. I know here we do. I know we do. Um, That's why I was wondering why we start on a Wednesday. If we started on that Monday, it would only be a matter of two days. But I got to agree, it is nice to have those, those days yeah, to get I your understand. routines and That's your procedures fine. out of the way because then, it, then it's rolling. Um, but I mean, it's still a decision we can make. As long as we can't discuss it, we still receive more information regarding it. Yeah, so we could we could pass to them saying because it. We still have time, so we could say we would prefer this. What do you think? Um, and table this for next meeting, so they have our input. And um, or we could say we approve this if you approve this. You know, we could do that too. You know, we could we could we could we could approve our calendar pending their approval. Because then if they say no, we're not doing that. We can revisit it, and then we don't have to revisit it. If they say okay, we'll take those changes. So we do have some options of, of what we want to do. So would you like to approve? that calendar with the changes made on the dates by pushing back a week if the high school approves theirs pending their approval because then it's off our table if that's really what we want and if they say no we want to do that we can discuss it next week and we can make a decision say well you can do that and we can do this next month uh, we still have enough time giving our staff what's going on but if that's really what we want to do is that calendar we can approve it pending high school's approval of a matched calendar and if they don't then we can Revisit and so say the only thing that's not matched is that we get they start early. Right. That that affects both. We will be moving our parent teacher conferences because that has no effect on them. Right. Um, it so helps, I think. Yeah, it, it really I does. That really does. Kids in both it does. Districts. Absolutely. I think, it a, I think it's better for both. It was sides. a good morale thing for our staff, and it was a good morale thing, you know, and and families liked it too because it made it much more convenient for them. Yeah. Well, how many high school teachers have kids in our district? Exactly. That actually, mm -hmm. go to a conference. Exactly. So it goes both ways. So are we okay with that? Approving the one week later calendar with the changes recommended pending the approval of high school accepting the same calendar? I'm fine with that. All right. Then that will be my motion. I move that we approve the one week later calendar pending with the, with the changes uh, pending the approval of high schools. Because that way if they accept it, we're done. If they say, no, we want to do this, we still can talk about what we want to do. All right. We get a second. Second that, Jeannie Borland. All in favor, aye, Corey Burgess. Aye, Jeannie Borland. Aye, Amanda Amon. Aye, Brandy Dubois. Aye, Charlene Diaz. So moved. Uh, all right, item 5.6, job descriptions. Dr. Stewart. Well, as I've told you in the past, thank you, Mr. President. Um, I've started working on job descriptions uh, as we were looking at uh, a number of things. Job descriptions came up. We have a big binder of those. And many of them, many, many, many of them, the most recent version of the job description is 2006, 2008, 2009. Um, I'm much more interested in having job descriptions that actually match what people are doing and uh, bringing those up to date. So this is the first set. This involves our um, classified folks at the district office. And uh, I don't know if you want to talk about any of them individually. If you've had time to look over them, you can approve them en masse or whatever you want to do. My real only question on this is by changing job descriptions does not change or reset payroll schedules. No, it does not. Okay. Then I yeah. 
I have read no, through them. I didn't see anything. Yeah. I just didn't want us to change the job description and screw up the payroll schedule. Yes. So I just want to make sure that that wasn't going to be a problem. And, and one, of the, one of the things, there are some significant changes for a couple of the positions because uh, with the split in the IGA with the high school district where we were sharing some business office positions, we found that we had uh, two of our positions that really each had job descriptions for one and a half people. Uh, on the other hand, we found at least one of our positions where it was really only about a two-thirds position. So uh, it let me le level out the job responsibilities and uh, do that. And then the other thing that I will say to you is that one of these positions um, uh, may change, may, I may bring back to you uh, in a year or so uh, with the retirement of some, with one of the people in our, uh, in our office and uh, perhaps the retirement of another person in the district that we would combine those positions. So we're co constantly looking at how we can level the job responsibilities for our folks. Any questions or concerns with the changes? All right. Then I will move we approve the job descriptions as submitted. A second, Brandy Dubois. All in favor? Aye, Corey Burgess. Aye, Janie Borland. Aye, Amanda Amon. Aye, Brandy Dubois. Aye, Charlene Diaz. So moved. Item 6.1, future topics. Any future topics that we'd like to see? We discussed the workshop for next month that we'll be meeting. Um, any other future topics at this time? All right. Item 6.2, upcoming board events. Do we have any? There's nothing scheduled, right? Uh, we have several of us are attending BOLTS, which is the leadership conference from ASBA. And, um, and that's, uh, I think, are we, all, are we all doing on the same day? No. No. Okay. So one person's doing this month, and then the others of us are doing next month. Um, ASBA workshops are excellent, and it's kind of exciting to know that we've got so many people participating. Training is always great. All right. So um, item 6.3, uh, date, time, and location of future meetings. We have uh, on here February 18th, 2021 at 530. That was before you guys made the change. So it would be February 11th. Okay, yeah, because we're changing that date. And that is still a Thursday. It's a Thursday. It's a second Thursday. Any conflicts? All right, let's set that as our future date, uh, February 11th at 5.30 p.m. for the workshop and 6 o'clock for the meeting. Okay, with that, we need a motion to adjourn. I move that we adjourn the meeting. I second, Amanda Amon. All in favor, aye, Corey Burgess. Aye, Janie Borland. Aye, Amanda Amon. Aye, Brandy Dubois. Aye, Charlene Diaz. Okay, we are adjourned. Thank you very much. Thank you, board members.